You've heard of an oxymoron, right? An oxymoron is a self-contradicting word or a group of words, you know, like jumbo shrimp or awfully good and only choice. Now, if we were just learning the language, some of these figures of speech would confuse you, and rightfully so. How can the word jumbo be used to describe something so small? And the same is true for an interaction with a person who calls themselves a Christian, but displays polar opposite qualities. It's like an oxymoron. It just doesn't seem to make sense. But who are we to judge whether someone is a Christian or not? After all, we truly don't know their heart but it can make you wonder who they really are and how am I supposed to treat them? And that's why in today's episode, we're going to unpack the question, can narcissists be Christians? My hope is that after our time today, you will never be fooled again by a wolf in sheep's clothing. So let's go ahead and dive in and first examine what is a narcissist? Well, a narcissist is someone who has an overinflated sense of themselves and is extremely self-involved to the degree that it makes them ignore the needs of those around them, even those they claim to love. Now here's how you can recognize them. They're self-centered, egotistical, arrogant, self-righteous, phony, manipulative, lying, disregarding of others, lacking empathy, difficulty with intimacy, entitled, playing the victim, and they have a high need for adoration, just to name a few. Now, a Christian is someone who has received Jesus as their Lord and Savior. They are, as their name implies, Christ followers, and you can recognize them by their adherence to biblical principles, death to their own desires, a heart for others, surrender to God's will, willingness to pick up their cross and follow Jesus no matter what the cost. So it makes sense that when you put these two descriptions together, narcissist and Christian, they seem to form an oxymoron. And this is where you'd feel like you're losing your mind. And maybe you're confused by the fact that they call themselves Christians, or maybe you've even seen them answer this altar call and even go to church more than you. And perhaps they even know scripture, but it's used to suit their agenda. The problem is narcissists usually know enough to be dangerous, but their desire to give up what pleases them is non-existent. You see, narcissists treat a relationship with God just like any other relationship. It's transactional. And worse, it's a one-sided transaction. And many narcissists will accept Jesus as their savior, but will not live a life surrendered to him. And that's why so much effort goes behind that Christian facade, because it's all an image for them. And one of the narcissist's qualities is a lack of empathy. But just because narcissists lack empathy doesn't mean that they lack all emotions. In fact, many will come to Christ through an emotional encounter. They'll answer an emotional altar call. And perhaps the fear of losing someone or the desire to obtain someone or something will lead them to Christ. And in some cases, because they believe it puts them in a favorable light. And I've known several narcissists who became Christians simply for the business connections. And one of the things they love the most about a relationship with God is they think that a quick, I'm sorry, wipes away all of their sins with God. And so it should with you. So yeah, the part of repentance works well for them. They can just absolve themselves. But the part that's lacking is true, genuine repentance. They want all the benefits, but they don't want to pay the price. And just like a relationship with you, they want what they want from you, but they're not willing to invest in you. They will paint the picture and create the image of a good husband or a sweet wife, but there is no depth. The relationship is shallow and the same is true for God. And even though they can have a personal experience, they can attend church, they can know the right words to say, maybe even serve in the church regularly, but at the core, there is no personal surrender. And they may even have a mic in their hand and command the attention of millions. But as Matthew 15, eight says, this people honors me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. 
And that's why you see a different person in public than you do in private, because they have no interest in surrendering their life to anyone, including Christ. In their mind, they honestly believe that good people like themselves don't need to take up their cross. That's only for the rest of you losers out there who don't have it together. So does this mean that no narcissist can be Christians? Well, in short answer, no. Now, I'm not saying that they're not saved, but they're definitely not surrendered. And that's what the Christian life is. It's a surrendered life. It's a life that we give up to our Lord and we say, God, have your way. Not my will, but yours be done. You see, surrender and submission doesn't fly with a narcissist. Yes, the covert one may pretend that they're submitted, but inwardly they're envious, rebellious, manipulative people who care only to get their own way. So their surface surrender is no surrender at all. But the other question to ask is this, can Christians be narcissistic? And the answer is yes. Any Christian at any time can struggle with narcissistic traits. And it's just like any other sin or less desirable quality that a Christian may battle with. And these narcissistic Christians have a hope for a change if they're willing to repent of their wrongdoing and surrender to the Holy Spirit. If they don't, they'll more likely grow more and more justified in their behavior. So how do you know a narcissistic Christian from a true Christian? And the answer can be found in Matthew 7, 16. You will recognize them by their fruits. Are grapes gathered from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? You see, true Christians will make mistakes and truly repent. Narcissists will make mistakes and then make excuses. True Christians will manipulate their lives to fit the will of God. Narcissists will manipulate everyone else to fit their will. True Christians will look to reflect the image of Jesus. Narcissists will look to uphold a false image to impress others. True Christians give and narcissists take. True Christians change over time. Narcissists don't. So the question is, can a narcissist be a Christian? No, I actually don't believe that they can be true Christ followers. They can certainly be religious, but they can't be Christians. There's just too much contradiction going on there. They say they love God, but their actions show they only love themselves. They do good deeds for the accolades, but God says well, that's all the reward that they're going to get. They say they follow God, but even their values go against biblical teachings if it suits their narrative. And you'll see this even in their political beliefs where they go where the benefit is for them, not godly values. They say they believe God's word, but only when it suits their purpose and it can be used to their advantage. They actually may even say, sorry, but there's no true repentance. They pretend to be giving and self-sacrificing people, but their giving is self-serving and their sacrificing is actually all for an image. The truth is the only genuine thing about a narcissist is their love for themselves. So as you move forward in your relationships, ask yourself this, Am I dealing with a narcissist that claims to be a Christian, or am I dealing with a Christian that's struggling with narcissistic qualities? My friend, there's a big difference. And the last point that I wanna to touch on is a big one, and that is how a narcissist interprets forgiveness. So I wanna encourage you to go ahead and watch this episode next to find out how your forgiveness with a narcissist can actually backfire if you're not aware of those signs. And before you go, I want to encourage you to grab a copy of our free Toxic People Survival Guide. It is my gift to you to help you learn how to identify and deal with all those difficult people in your life. I'll go ahead and include a link in the description section below.